So the news of today, Nikki Haley's rather embarrassing defeat in Nevada. She lost to none of the above by an enormous margin. Sad to see it. Almost sad to see it. I mean, obviously, if you dislike her, you love to see it. Personally, eh, I don't know. The real question I've got to ask is why she's still in the race. It does not really make sense if there's not some other thing going on. Because she does not have any real path to victory in terms of the nomination. Now, that's not to say that she doesn't have a path to victory in the general election if she were to get the nomination for the Republican Party. All the polling, as far as I can tell, shows fairly clearly, or at the very least, decisively, if not necessarily accurately, that a general, generic Republican versus Joe Biden is a sweep. And it's a it's a clean sweep. It's like a 10-point-plus lead. Insurmountable. Complete blowout. Versus Trump-Biden. Trump has always kind of held a bit of a lead, or at the very least, for the last couple months, he's held a, a tenuous lead. Um, his lead has been growing. And right now, I mean, obviously it's at the highest point um, because, as I said, it kept growing. But it is nowhere close. It was like, I think, at max, like two points, like a two-point lead. Um, now that could have been a two-point lead in the popular vote which would have been because uh, Republicans tend to have about actually a two-point uh, difference, a two-point deficit in the popular vote, even when electoral colleges are, you know, dead on uh, a 2% two per a two lead, two-point lead in the popular vote for Trump would have equated to, you know, an electoral landslide, more or less. So... Yes, but the point is that a generic Republican would have been leading by like 10 points. So Nikki Haley as, you know, Nikki Haley versus Joe Biden, technically I don't think there's been specific polls on that and you can't always extrapolate from generic versus a known name because generic is basically just, would you rather vote Republican versus this specific guy who you've got specific grievances against? It's like, oh, well, in that case, this nebulous, weird thing over here, that sounds pretty good, but there is no nebulous. It's, it's a person who is going to have faults and foibles and a history of past things that they've done that you probably don't agree with or you hate that you absolutely despise and they're going to say things that are just completely wild and you hate them and therefore you can't really generalize from generic Republican versus a specific generic Democrat versus a specific it just doesn't work like that but it does suggest that anybody but Trump is going to come into a lead against Biden Anybody but Biden is going to come into a lead against Trump, which that is what the polls would suggest. And it does seem to be the general consensus amongst normal people like that just feels correct. If that is the case and the Republican caucus is looking at those specific polls, they could potentially be saying, all right, Nikki, stay in. If you stay in until the caucus, we're going to make sure that you become the nominee because we want to win. We want to take over the presidency. 
Trump is a very divisive figure, and therefore, it's better if he's gone. It's better if he's out. He's old at this point. He probably doesn't have another, you know, campaign in him four years down the line. So this would be it. This, this, was, this is his death knell, and that would be it. The problem is, while I think technically they are capable of doing something like this, I believe it's called a brokered caucus, where in which essentially the primary results are disregarded, ignored, basically, and they say, okay, but you know what, we get it, this person won the primary, and very handily, but we're not picking them. I think technically you're, they're allowed to do that. I don't know if they would ever actually consider doing something like that, because in my mind, it would signal the death knell of the party, the organization, which is a political organization with people that have jobs, salaries, and these types of things, who are perhaps not the brightest bulbs in the counter, but are not idiots. And I think they would be able to see that, look, if we completely ignore the will of the voters, our donors, uh, we're done, we're toast, we're never gonna win another election, and we're, we're out of jobs. Uh, and, you know, this whole thing is going to get broken up, which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but I, I, I highly doubt a super large, powerful political organization like this is going to do anything to seriously jeopardize their ability to maintain power in a, you know, duopoly, monoparty, but, you know, the perceived two-party system. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, there is the potential for something along the lines of a Hillary Clinton, you know, Bernie Sanders situation, where in which the, you know, electric and all these types of things are sort of like manipulated and there's some backroom deals going on. Uh, I doubt that very much because the, the margin between Hillary Clinton and uh, Bernie Sanders was way closer way, 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 way closer, as opposed to Nikki Haley versus, you know, Donald Trump. There's, there's no, it's, it's not even remotely close. So if they were going to do something, I think they would have to just come out and say, no, we're, we're, we're deciding what we're going to do. Thanks for your input, but we're disregarding it. Now, the other option with Nikki Haley still remaining in I suppose there's a couple. The first one is why a lot of people get into the race in the first place, which is simply they're doing it for a position in the incoming uh, administration. So, you know, Ron DeSantis is running, probably because he actually wanted to be president, but running with the assumption that if he doesn't win and he puts on a good showing, that he might get folded in to the new, you know, Trump 2024 administration, given a nice, you know, cushy job that's going to set him up for, you know, the presidency in four years. Maybe possibly similar situation with like a Vivek Ramaswamy, Chris Christie, blah, 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 those types of people. I mean, obviously, look, you look at, again, 2020, Biden, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris never had a shot at winning but she ends up vice president. An unpopular vice president, but she's still vice president. So, I mean, that that's an upgrade. That was a huge promotion for her, to be perfectly honest. Now, does Nikki Haley, by staying in, is she increasing her chances of getting the vice presidency? That's a possibility. That is a possibility. Although, I think at this point, she would be aware that staying in the race is actually probably souring her uh, in Trump's mind. That he's act yeah, that actually at this point, she's being a little bit too ornery. She's not a team player. She's not necessarily on my side. And therefore, I don't want to trust her. Um, you know, because like, I mean, I would certainly never consider like Pence being his 
vice president again. He's, you know, he felt he felt he was betrayed. So I don't think Nikki Haley staying in increases her chances at a position in the, you know, whoever wins. You know, if, if there's a, you know, Trump administration, I don't think she gets a better position out of it. Especially considering that she already had a position in Trump 2016 administration which apparently he liked her, or at the very least didn't hate her. She did ostensibly a decent enough job. So I don't think she's running for that stuff. The other option, which seems to be the most likely, is she's simply in there to gather up more funds. She's there to, you know, gather a big war chest for some future political run. That's a possibility. And I suppose it's reasonable to assume that. However, what is she going to run for? Like, senator, governor? Do you think she tries to run for, you know, president in, like, 2028? I suppose that's a possibility. I suppose, yeah, I suppose that I could see that happening. But, you know, I mean, with, with this race, it's a very clear indication that, to be perfect, well, I mean, I suppose Trump is a weird wild card where in which, with him out of the race, the base might you know, his, or I shouldn't say the base, his base specifically, might not necessarily move, you know, to stay with, you know, Republicans and these types of things. Um, because remember, I mean, a lot of, like, people that voted for Trump in 2016 were Bernie supporters, who were like, look, yeah, I'm definitely a Bernie guy, but if Bernie's not in, I'd vote for Trump. I don't know if all of those people are still there, my guess is a lot of them soured on Trump, but he still represents a weird, non, semi-independent, you know, more of an anti-establishment uh, ethos, and therefore those people are not necessarily, they're never going to vote for a Nikki Haley, is basically what I'm trying to say. So... It's possible in 2028, but I think any of the people that, you know, dropped out earlier and endorsed Donald Trump are probably better positioned for future future political runs, even with a slightly smaller war chest. So the question is, again, what we started out with, why is she still running? I'm not really sure. The other option, which is perhaps the most disconcerting option, is that she really, truly feels that Donald Trump is an unstoppably evil force that is highly, hugely destructive and will result in calamity and cataclysm of an untold, unknowable Degree, and therefore it is the first time that a politician has ever made a selfless act, and they go, "This is it. This is, this is absolutely the hill I have to die on," uh, because there's no way you have to, you know, pry it for my pry this run for my cold dead hands, because there's no shot I'm giving it up any other way, because he is such an enormous threat. I guess. I mean, that's, that's the, that is the most disconcerting because it would suggest, that, you know, like I said, a politician is, you know, performing a wholly selfless act because of their, you know, they're just absolutely scared shitless about a possibility of, you know, a Trump presidency again. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Do let me know in the comments. Obviously, this is a totally different video than I'm normally making. Um, although, to be honest, if it does well, this is a super easy video to make, so 
I could easily see myself doing more stuff like this. So yeah, let me know. Let me know if you hated it too, to be perfectly honest. Um, I welcome all comments, criticisms, feedback of any kind. So please do let me know. Comment, yes, no, likes, hated it. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. You know the deal.